Hello everyone and welcome, it's Chef Jason Morris, your Ace Hardware Grill Expert. And I'll tell you what, I've been here today at Highlands Ranch Ace Hardware hamming it up <laughs> all morning long with my helpful folks. That's right, because we're talking ham, ham on the big green egg. That's right, but we're not talking any ham, we're talking like epically delicious ham on this Red Vest approved video. Hey, and a couple footnotes for you. Uh, down below in the comment section, there's gonna be a little link. Go ahead and grab that link, tie, uh, click there, Print out this recipe, use that to follow along. We will cover uh, a good amount of this as an overview, but this recipe is gonna have all the down and dirty, the nitty gritty, and all the major details that you're looking for. And then up top, either left or right or somewhere up there, there's a little I, that's our information tab. That's gonna come up from time to time and that's gonna let you know, hey, this is the grill we're using, the gear we're using, the gadgets we're using, the rubs, all of that cool stuff and more. That's our info attainment, uh, so to speak, right? Hey, and then down below as well in the comment section, let us know what you like or what you'd like to see more of on our next Red Vest approved video. But I think we're ready to rock and roll here. We're definitely ready to ace this recipe. And let's talk through a little bit about what we have today, what the ingredients we're cooking with. Well, we bought a uh, about a seven, seven and a half pound boneless uh, shoulder, pork shoulder or a picnic ham, right? We're keeping it nice and easy on this guy. We've got a couple different brines of ours we're gonna use. We're gonna add some more flavor to those brines because this guy's gonna sit for two days in that brine. Guess what you don't see? You don't see any nitrites or nitrates or sulfites or uh, pink salts because we're gonna keep this clean. We're cleaning this recipe up and we're having a blast with some good, clean flavor. We're gonna add uh, some rub-a-dub, a little bit of brown sugar. We've got uh, vanilla extract, we've got cinnamon, and we have some maple syrup as well. We're gonna add some of these ingredients to that brine to kick up that flavor some more. And then we're also gonna use some of it for our ham glaze because no ham comes out unglazed, right? You've gotta have a glazed ham to help you get ready to rock and roll for this ham holiday. So whether you're using this uh, at the tailgate, you're going to the game, you're bringing this ham along, or whether you're entertaining family at your house, we think this is a pretty solid recipe. And the nice thing about this recipe, totally customizable, making it your ham. That's right, the ham of your dreams. When it comes to making ham, one of the things I like about this recipe is we're not adding any sulfites or nitrates or nitrites. What we're doing is really doing a fresh picnic ham from scratch, just using one of our brines. We're gonna go ahead and use the chef brine. So what we have here is we followed the instructions on the package and now we've got a nice cool brine. So this brine, uh, we heated it up, gave it a chance for everything to open up for all the sugar and salt to melt and dissolve. And now we're gonna fortify this. So we're gonna take the chef's brine and we're gonna add two cups of maple syrup. So that's gonna be about 16 ounces of maple syrup. And then we're gonna go ahead and add two cups of brown sugar as well. We want all of that molasses -y color to get in there and to really start giving this ham kind of the foundation for what it needs to be an absolutely amazing ham. It's gonna spend two days in this brine, okay? So that's important to remember. This, this process is not a fast process when it comes to the brining. This is gonna spend a couple days in there uh, and come out absolutely wonderful. All right, the next thing we have here is we have our boneless ham. So we're gonna go ahead and stick our ham in there. And now we're gonna let that ham sit in the refrigerator covered for two days. We want that ham to absorb all the flavor that it can possibly absorb coming out nice and delicious for us. So there you have it. That's pretty easy. Like I said, we followed the, the uh, brine instructions on the package. So we followed that, we cooled the brine, then we added our brown sugar and added our uh, maple syrup. Now we add our boneless pork shoulder to that and we'll see you in two days. That's right, we'll see you in 48 hours when this is done. It's time to make our glaze now. And while the pork is uh, in the brine and while that picnic shoulder is in the brine for a couple days, I thought, you know what? Let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Keep this covered in our kitchen and it will be set and ready for us to go. So what we're gonna do is basically add two cups of brown sugar. We're just making a nice sugar glaze. Hey, and the great thing about this entire recipe, 100% customizable to make it exactly what you want. We're gonna add our, to our two cups of brown sugar, we're gonna add two tablespoons of our rub-a-dub. And this is a great rub that's just gonna give you that well-rounded flavor. We're gonna add a teaspoon of cinnamon or more if you prefer. Uh, I just like a nice little hint of cinnamon in there, nothing too crazy. Vanilla extract, we're gonna add a teaspoon, uh, again, or more if you want, depending on your preference. Now we're gonna finish it up with our cup of maple syrup. 
So now that we've got that in there, basically what we do now, pretty simple, we're gonna stir this up and make a beautiful, beautiful glaze. One of the things we'll need to have handy when it comes time to glaze our turkey is a brush. So we just got one of our pastry brushes here, brand new. We're gonna go ahead and use that. We'll dip it in there, baste our turkey, or I'm sorry, baste our ham when the time comes and life is good. We took our ash tool, we stirred up all of our lump charcoal, getting all that ash down below. Uh, and we got it, we're in a nice spot here. I like to normally uh, let mine get about halfway down because what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add a couple chunks of a Ozark sugar maple. This is just some of the wood chunks that we have. But the nice thing is I'm gonna get a good, even, consistent smoke the entire way through because now I'm gonna top it with a little bit more lump charcoal, like that, and then, it's time to get this guy set and ready to go. So what I like to do then is make a little well in the middle, right here, and then we're gonna take our loof lighter and put our loof lighter in there and we're gonna get this fire started nice and fast. And I like to load it full because I wanna make sure I've got a good amount of charcoal in here to keep that flame going and to keep it nice and strong so it can sustain enough charcoal for our entire cook. As we get that uh, loof down in there, you can see it starts spitting a little bit of embers, spitting a little bit of stuff. I like to let it go and let it get nice and hot here. And then once I know it's good and hot, I listen for that flame. Once I hear the flame, then I pull that back so I don't melt the end of the loof. And now what I'm gonna do is just let that flame kind of fan its way into the center of this. I wanna build a really nice, hearty, robust middle here to get that charcoal up and running. And then the beautiful part is, if you remember, we set our wood chunks just outside that. So as this lump burns, we are going to have a really wonderfully flavored uh, smoke and charcoal throughout the entire process. All right, make sure that's all set and ready to go. And now we'll just kind of put these other pieces a little bit around to the side. And we're gonna make sure that the bottom is fully open right now and the top is fully open. We're on the climb to 200 degrees. That's where we're looking to go with this. So what we'll do next is we'll just let this stay open. We'll be ready to go here in just a minute. Uh, and then once that gets set, we'll show you how we load the plate setter, get the drip pan ready and the grill rack back on. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and let this climb until it gets up into that 180, 200 degree range. We're very, very lucky to have the brand new regulator on our big green egg. So we're gonna leave this guy wide open. Like I said, we want that temperature to climb into the 200 degree range. The great thing about this new regulator, when the time comes, we just dial this down and get set and ready to go. Love this, totally a great upgrade. Uh, and that's what we're cooking on today. But keep in mind, even if you have the daisy wheel, just keep in mind the gap that we're going with here and the temperature control. Because again, our goal is to get this guy up to that 200 degree range and then that's when we'll get ready to load that ham out of the brine and into the big green egg, ready for a couple hours of low and slow smoke. All right, we are set and ready to go. It's time to add our plate setter. A, a chef tip for you. We kept our plate setter in the house. We wanted it to stay nice and warm, so we weren't adding a cold plate setter onto a hot grill. That'll cause it to fracture, so we left it as is. And you'll notice we have the legs up, uh, we want to have room to have a little bit of a drip pan underneath here, and then we're going to put the grill grates back on top, and we're going to go ahead and close this now so we can maintain that 200 degree temperature. Uh, we dropped a little bit, obviously, because it was open, but once we get back up to 200 degrees, we will be set and ready to get the ham in. Look at that. We've got some beautiful smoke coming out of there. We've got our ham that is fresh off of its 48-hour brine. And we're gonna go ahead and get that out. We're gonna go ahead and put that on there, right onto the big green egg, just like that, on the grill grate with the drip pan. We're gonna go ahead and load our eye grill too. And I showed you that earlier. What I love about the eye grill is that nice thin wire, doesn't impede the big green egg at all. But look at this, now we can track our temperature really from the comfort of our phone. So that allows us to not have to come back out all the time and check and open and close and open and close. We get to track temperatures now from the comfort of our phone. So we'll set the eye grill right there, let that uh, sit away from the grill for just a little bit so it doesn't get hot. We're going to go back up here and get rocking and rolling. All right, one of the things we forgot to do when we took it out of the brine was to score it. And what we want to do is start to score right through the skin, not too deep. We want to start making some cross marks so that we can let this ham start to pick up flavor in all those nooks and crannies. 
And then the best part is when we glaze it, everything's going to open up and really become fantastic little flavor catchers that are inside there. So don't worry about it. If you forget to uh, make those cuts out of the brine, you can do it real quick once you get it back on the grill. We've done a great job getting some smoke in there. And I'll tell you, the cool thing about the Big Green Egg is we layered those wood chunks in that lump charcoal so we get an even, good, consistent smoke. We're going to go ahead now and move this into the pan, and we're going to go ahead and cover it with foil, and then we're going to put it back in. And now starts the next part of our cooking process where we cover it with foil, we track its temperature, we're going to open up the Big Green Egg a little bit and adjust it to that 325 temperature, but we'll leave it covered. We'll adjust the egg to 325. Once it hits 325, we're going to go ahead and cook this until about 135, 140 degrees internal temperature. Well, you can see we've got nice embers down in there. And I'm going to adjust this now to 325. So I'm going to adjust my screen there and I'll move my flap over there. And that's about where I like it. One of the things I tend to do on my big green egg, my personal preference is, I like to keep that bottom open a little bit more than normal so that it kind of keeps it loaded and ready to go. And then what I do is I'll adjust the top as much or as little as I want to allow just a little bit of air to escape. Or if I need a quick burst, I can open it up and get a quick burst of air. So we're gonna keep this adjusted about right there on the top and right there on the bottom. And that's our 325 degrees. Now we're gonna let this guy cook until it hits 135, 140 degrees internal temperature. All right, we hit that 130, 135 actually degrees. We're gonna go ahead and uncover that. And now we're gonna go ahead and bump this temperature up to the 425 mark uh, and really get this thing dialed in so we can finish off this ham. Now that we're getting ready to go in that 425 range, I'm gonna go ahead and open this up even more on the bottom, letting more air get in. And then I've got the top adjusted right about halfway as you can see so we want this thing to start really building up a lot of heat a lot of energy so that we can get that up to 425 and get that ham nice and golden brown go ahead and get a little glaze going on here we hit that mark we are starting to climb life is good it is time to spend the last few minutes glazing this so like we said in the recipe you know glaze this maybe every five minutes for the next half hour or 45 minutes or so but we want to get a beautiful beautiful glaze on here and when i'm done this is a one and done glaze i'm not going to save this or uh use it for anything else once i'm done basting this ham this glaze goes in the garbage so we'll get it shut and we'll let it keep doing its thing but that is how we glaze it okay we just hit 150 degrees and that's the temperature we wanted this ham to get to right Go to 150 and then we're gonna remove it, cover it and let it go from there. I'm gonna brush a little bit more of my brown sugar glaze on there and let it do its thing and work its magic. And next up, we're gonna pull this off, bring it over to the cutting board. But first, we're gonna give it just a couple minutes for that final last minute glaze to do its magic. You ever have one of those days where you wish you could smell through the TV? This is like hamapalooza. This is the most hamtastic thing I have done in a long time. What I love about this recipe, like I said earlier, is we control the flavor from package to plate. We control the sodium and we don't have any curing agents or anything in here that we don't want in here. Just beautiful, delicious ham. And I'll tell you what, be sure to head down to the comment section, click on that little link and you can download this recipe and follow along the video as well. Be sure while you're down there, let, leave us some comments. Let us know what you like, what you don't like. What would you like to see? on the next Red Vest Approved video. And while you're down there, be sure to subscribe so that you'll be notified when our next video is live and ready to go. Then up top, I think left or right, depending on maybe it's that left or that right, there's the little eye for info. Click on that, that's gonna tell you all the gear, gadgets, and grills that we use today for this wonderful recipe. The Big Green Egg did such a great job putting the beautiful, robust charcoal flavor into this ham. And I'll tell you, this ham is perfect for holidays, for tailgating, for ham salad. Oh my gosh, ham salad, ham sandwiches, ham paninis, uh, ham soup, everything you could imagine, all things ham. Look at that beautiful glaze we got on there. I'm gonna cut into this. You know, I always like to steal a nice little piece off the top. Gives me a good little bit of the glaze and the crust. And wow, that's incredible. I'm Chef Jason Morris. Your ace hardware grill expert. Thanks for joining along.